Spirit. Please. What? Now, we welcome you back to Third Phase of Moon Radio. I'm your host, Dr. J, and today we have a historical making show for you. First, we bring you the highest ranking United States politician to come forward and speak with regards to extraterrestrials and disclosure because of it was Senator Mike Gravel, because of the man who put together the citizen hearing on disclosure, Mr. Stephen Bassett, who I might add, by the way, just won the Researcher of the Year Award at the UFO Congress and the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Conscious Life Expo. Senator Gravel and Mr. Bassett, how are you? Very good. Hi, Steve. Hi, uh, Senator. It's good to be with you again. Good, good. Now, gentlemen, I'm going to bring you the founder of Third Phase of the Moon, Blake Cousins, to give the honors of the first question. Blake, how are you doing? Doing good, Dr. J. Andy Elias, and wow, again, an incredible uh, radio show. We're about to go on a ride, people. Let's uh, everybody hang on for the ride, because we just posted a video. We interviewed Senator Gravel last month. The, the videos are already exceeding 100,000 hits just on our YouTube channel alone. The word is getting out. Incredible interview. Everybody take a look at that. But we also have Stephen Bassett, who basically stated exclusively in Third Phase of Moon yesterday, March 31st, 535 DVDs are going out to the Congress. It's 2014, the media summer outlet for alien disclosure. Let's hang on. Stephen Bassett, is it going to happen this summer? Actually, 5,350 DVDs. These will be 10 DVD sets, the full record of the Citizen Hearing on Disclosure, edited, very nicely edited. Um, that took place April 29, May 3, 30 hours of testimony from 40 witnesses to a panel of former members of Congress, including, of course, Senator Gravel. And those will hit the hill about um, April 7 or 8. Uh, we're going to do a substantial media ramp into that. Um, uh, which will include uh, uh, asking people all over the country to email and tw- uh, send tweets to their uh, rep- representatives, their two senators and congressperson, to asking that they check this uh, this material out and talk with me. So it's going to be about a three-month full-scale, broad-spectrum effort to uh, get the attention of the Congress and get hearings. Uh, it will certainly get the attention of the media, regardless of what happens. So it's going to generate quite a bit of heat. Uh, and uh, but it's the most comprehensive effort, and it, it couldn't be, it wouldn't even be remotely possible if it wasn't for the citizen hearing on disclosure, the record of that that we have, and of course the participation by the members of Congress, including Senator Gravel. It, it's, it's a game changer. Uh, and what's unique about it, never really been done before, is that by providing this record to all of the members, particularly the ones I'll be approaching, which are the committee members of the various committees that are appropriate. They can see exactly how the hearing would go, the quality of the witnesses, the testimony, how the um, the, the committee, the sitting committee, uh, reacted to it, their in questions and so forth, and it just strips the political risk out of the equation so that it makes it easier for them to say, okay, let's do this. And, of course, if they do it, if we actually get hearings, regardless of the, the media strongly may be correct, if we get hearings, I believe the government will be have no choice but to finally step out. The president has to step out after cutting a deal and uh, with the military people, military intelligence, and, and announce the ET presence. That's the game plan. It's um, going to be very, very interesting, and it, and it starts essentially on March 31st. We'll all be doing some media in the, in the five or six days earlier. Now, during those five days, Senator Gravel, I watched you and the other five retired congressmen and women, and you literally transformed over those five days, which is what we said last month. Now, the other day, I reached out and spoke to Senator Dukakis, and initially, right off the bat, I said, you know, the word UFO, and he essentially scoffed. But I said, hear hear me out for a second. I said, there was a citizen hearing on disclosure. Have you heard about it? He said, no. I said, it was a mock congressional hearing with five retired congressmen and one retired senator who you know, Mike Gravel. He actually started to listen at that point. I said, over those five days, they heard testimony of the 40 witnesses, high military ranking expert and expert witnesses, and they were transformed and came to two conclusions. One, that we are being engaged by an extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional race, and two, 
that the government has known about it and has been covering it up since at least 1947, if not before. And he agreed to look at the hearings and then, you know, may speak on it. I want to ask you, what would you tell every other politician out there who fails to do this job, who fails to hear what the military witnesses have to say about what has happened in this country? Well, what I would tell them is essentially uh, underscoring what Steve Bassett is doing. He is sending to the Congress, to the individual members, uh, copies of the DVDs of the hearings. So obviously a good number of them will have their staff look at this, but then I hope that the staff will be sufficiently impressed with the caliber of testimony we received that they would then bring it to the attention forcefully of their particular member. And as a result of that, then there would be get the beginning of a dialogue between individual members uh, that could eventually, as Steve hopes, uh, lead to hearings by the Congress in a more formal setting of a committee or subcommittee. Yes, uh, Senator Gravel, um, you ran for President of the United States, so has, uh, you know, Dennis Kucinich. And he and Obama were asked something in regards to the UFO phenomenon, and uh, Dennis Kucinich was basically laughed out of, of, by the press, and uh, Obama pretty much says, I don't really care what's going on in outer space, I care about what's happening here on planet Earth. But basically, I think after your... Uh, when he came out on third phase of the moon last month, people in the public and people in high officials places are coming out and thinking, hey, maybe I might need to rethink this. We I mean, really, uh, this is, what do you think about how the media is t taking to the UFO phenomenon? Are they doing their job or are they basically dropping the ball and are covering it up? They're dropping the ball and covering it up. <clears throat> and it's not unusual uh, for the mainstream media to just follow blindly the policies set uh, by uh, by the government. And the policy that we have is that the government doesn't acknowledge that the issue exists and what information they have, uh, they cover up and say it doesn't exist. We don't know anything about it. And this is what we hope will, will transpire uh, or a catharsis will take place uh, once enough members are able to focus on the testimony, the awesome testimony that we, we received with the hearings that Steve Bassett was able to set up last May. You know, you know Senator Gorbachev, uh, I want to ask you, during the debates, it's pretty much, uh, pretty much the biggest podium you'll ever have in history on television. It's witnessed by millions, if not maybe a billion people around the planet eventually. Is there any, like, restrictions, what you cannot say and what you can say uh, in regards to, you know, possible alien existence? No, not at all. There's no restriction on it. It's a question of becoming informed as to <clears throat> the academic research that's been done out there and the facts that are out there. And, of course, the view that I have is that it would be the ultimate human arrogance of, uh, of the people of this planet to think that we are the only sentient beings in the cosmos. That's ridiculous. They, we now know that there are thousands of planets and stars out there that could sustain life. Now, is there life out there that's superior to ours or inferior to ours? Likely. The question is, it's so difficult to prove because no effort has been made to outreach that other than the astronomers and the telescopes that are out there peering at what may be possibly occurring in the cosmos. Yeah, you know, I have a question for both you, Mr. Bassett and Senator, which I'd like to get an answer, both because of your respective careers. Now, there have been several politicians who have things at stake, such as the Bush family, director of CIA, big oil money, they have a lot to lose if free energy comes forward as a result of downed ET craft which we have stored in United States soil. Now, what are the benefits of the disclosure to all of humanity, which is kind of a given, and also the loss 
for those in power, politicians, royal families, and the rich alike? Steve, go ahead. Let me start with that one. Um, look, I understand this that, that, that people have raised this issue and, and they're trying to sort of find some basic equations to to use to think about this. It's, but it's just not that simple. Um, there's anytime there's a major change in the, in certainly in uh, in the world, a paradigm shift in the human, uh, the, I guess the human condition. There are people who benefit, people who maybe lose a little bit. Uh, the wise people adjust. They, they uh, reconfigure to take advantage of the change. And so, yeah, you can, you can pick winners and losers, I suppose, in terms of what happens in a post-disclosure world after the announcement's been made. But there, there's so many things that are going to take place, and they're so interconnected that I assure you uh, it's not straightforward at all that all the oil billionaires will go broke. Not going to happen. Or that these other vested interests will be turned upside down. No, I don't think so. Um, what will happen, though, is that they will have to make adjustments, as well as uh, the general population. Uh, and um, there are some significant benefits that may emerge during that period of adjustment. Uh, one of them certainly is uh, the possibility, and it's a very real possibility, that the U.S. government has spent a fortune trying to understand the technologies and the crafts that they have gotten their hands on. And they've gotten their hands on a couple of them. And uh, there's, there's certainly already testimony that they have attempted to utilize or work off of some of that technology that Phil, of course, in his book, Day After Roswell, but uh, more importantly, the propulsion system and the energy system. Those are profound technologies, which uh, any reasonable person would know if we could put them into full um, spectrum use in around the world in a responsible way, it would be transforming. Those technologies are simply not available. They're, not, they're even denied to exist by the government, and this is the truth embargo. And, it's a, and, and for the government, it's simple. If they bring these technologies out, they know that the truth embargo, the, the, the acknowledgement of the ET issue, will have to end. And they're not ready to do it yet, so they're going to hold on to those techs. So, again, it's a very complex equation. I think the simple answer is, look, there's going to be change, and there's a huge potential benefit for the human race in general. And, um, and I also believe that the very wealthy will make adjustments and take advantage of this change, and they'll be just fine. The rich will still be rich, and hopefully the poor will be less poor. Um, these are the kind of technologies that could go a long ways to bridging this growing gap between the rich and the poor, not only in the United States, which is just, just uh, shameful, but uh, around the world. So that's the way you have to look at it. Don't, don't simplify it too much. But I want to make another quick point here, which is really interesting, and then I'll toss this to uh, the senator. Uh, with respect to Dukakis, uh, I'm very pleased that he is willing to look into this. And as you know, uh, I have sent you a, 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 the access code for the former governor to uh, review the citizen hearing on disclosure at his convenience. And that, that, that brings us up this point. Um, Governor Dukakis, Senator Gravel, and Congressman Bartlett are all octogenarians. They're very close in age. And so they certainly put to the lie that as people get, quote, older, they become more committed to the status quo and ossified in their thinking. Uh, Roscoe Bartlett, a Republican, uh, uh, Governor Dukakis, a, a Democrat, and, of course, Senator Gravel, a Libertarian, all are still open to this. Uh, certainly, uh, Congressman Bartlett makes some very strong statements. And so here, here's an example of people who, uh, in, in, uh, much later in life, are still thinking on the cutting edge of what's going on and willing to embrace uh, what is new and try to uh, bring that out in, in for the benefit of all. Where you've got Congress right now that's filled with a lot of young Turks whose minds are locked shut and unable to, like, see beyond their nose and causing a lot of problems. Of course, we want to open their minds for them pretty soon. I just want to point that out, right? That is pretty remarkable. And, uh, of course, uh, Senator Gravel has, has been a tremendous support to this and, uh, and is going to continue to be, and, and we are very grateful for that. Now, I'll toss that, that initial question back to Senator Gravel. Senator, well, you, you being a politician, obviously, if you recall the question, what do you think we, we will benefit, which, again, is a given, but because you've been a politician, you know other politicians who have become rich and 
and are among the wealthy, what do you see them losing because you were in the position to see them gain? Well, uh, I don't see them truly losing anything. You know, it's in the uh, eyes of the beholder. Uh, what I see is a it's a plus all the way around. First off, we we have too 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 many secrets. Uh, Ninety percent of what the government holds secret should not be held secret. Uh, you know, we need secrecy for order of battle, that kind of activity. But uh, and probably some conversations in negotiations. But beyond that, the people should be made aware of whatever the government knows, and and that of course is the the strength and the source of democracy. You can't have a democracy if the people are ill informed and uninformed and manipulated by the political society uh, to specific lock in goals. And so I would hope that one of the benefits that would accrue from this effort by Steve to uh, to go to the Congress, try to open as many eyes and minds as as we possibly can, and and see what happens as a result of that. Uh, that's going to be beneficial to the Congress. It could be beneficial to the American people, and will certainly be beneficial. Uh, to advancement of technology uh, from what will be revealed. The presidential election is pretty much the power of the people. We get a chance every four years to basically vote for somebody that represents the people. And then when this happens and somebody's elected president, you see it all the time. The president elected, they have all these agendas, but then they go into the national security briefing then they come out, and the public, and they look like they're kind of a deer in the headlights. And you see this, 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 this fear that they've changed overnight after they've been debriefed. What do you think of a possible, you know, it's two years down the line, the new election's coming around the corner, people are already setting up to do their campaigns. What about somebody going out there and saying, hey, look, I'm about free energy, I'm about getting the secrets out to the public in regards to free energy, we're going to open up Area 51 or whatever secret base is out there that's kind of running the game with the technology, and I'm going to find out what's going on and give it to the people. Uh, is this guy going to get locked out, or is, does this guy have a chance? Well, yeah, he sure as hell will get locked out. I think you start with the theory that, uh, you know, we elect people to office uh, that can do what they want. Uh, far from it. Uh, the person that wins the presidential election is already controlled by what I call Wall Street, by the military industrial complex. Uh, by the various uh, special interest groups. Uh, and so that person doesn't rise to that office without understanding the conduct that that person must continue to exercise. So what, what would happen uh, when people say, well, Gravel, we wish you'd got elected president. Well, hell, I wouldn't have. Uh, it would have been a disaster for the very simple reason that the Congress uh, is off in another direction. They're controlled by special interests, whether they be special interests in the Middle East uh, or special interests uh, on Wall Street. They're controlled by it. And so Obama, who manipulated the election to make it sound like he represented change, uh, really was not representing change, and he demonstrated that the moment he acquired office. The same thing occurred with uh, Clinton. Uh, he represented hope, and uh, there was no hope realized in his presidency. The, <clears throat> the problem is, is that we're structured in such a way that the people have no participation uh, in the governing process. All they can do is give their power away on election day. They have the power for a few seconds when they vote for members of Congress, senators, and the president. Well, that's not nearly enough. What the people need is to participate in government through the process of making laws. Lawmaking is the central power of government. And as we've heard from Marcus Cicero more than 2,000 years ago, is that freedom is participation in power. 
Well, if the people want the participation, uh, participation in power, they have to become lawmakers. Forgetting that they're going to get the power from a person they elect as president or, or a member of Congress. Uh, here, I am, I'm particularly fond of, uh, Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts. She has a spontaneity and a grasp of the issues that I think is phenomenal. Uh, could she get elected president? I would hope. In, in my fantasy, I would hope that she could. But what could she do with a Congress as recalcitrant as we have today? Probably very little. But then she would have the courage to face up to it, and maybe that would be revealing to the body politic. You know, three U.S. presidents have talked about disclosure. First, Carter. He saw something, but when he became president, all of a sudden what the UFO report he filed was no longer such a big issue. It was just something he saw in the sky. Reagan, two credible sightings. Uh, disclosure comes. He makes on a world stage two references that if we were uh, attacked by and uh, invaded, wouldn't we all come together as humans and forget the little differences we had? Bush, when he was on his campaign trail, Bush W., was asked by, I believe, a ufologist or a UFO enthusiast, said, uh, Governor, if you become president, will you please end this disclosure or end the secrecy on UFOs? And he said, yes, of course. Obviously, nothing happened. Recently, Podesta raised five reasons why he won't work with the Obama administration. According to you, Mr. Bassett, which you told just uh, the listeners a couple months back uh, on, in the New York Times, and one of them was because of the UFO secrecy. What can you tell us about that, Bassett? And then again, you, Senator, with regards to what has failed in the politics with these three presidents I just mentioned. And just to warn you, we have a few minutes before break. Okay, let me defer to Steve. Steve, yeah, let me clarify here. Um, look, in terms, there's been a lot of, there has been interaction between presidents and this issue. And the number one source of information on that is presidentialufo.com. This is the work of Grant Cameron. Extremely important website, presidentialufo.com. And you will learn that, you know, whether it's Kennedy, Carter, uh, they, uh, both Bushes, um, and Clinton, Definitely, Clinton. There have been intersections with this issue. Disclosure, no, not at all. But comments, uh, and in fact, direct engagement, uh, as in the case of Clinton. And yet, disclosure, meaning the announcement that the ETs are in fact here, we're not alone, is not has not happened. Um, with respect to Podesta, it, it, that that was an article in the New York Times, in which the writer was saying, "Here's five reasons why President Obama might not want to bring Podesta into the White House." Because Podesta has taken some positions which could be problematic. But, of course, Obama did bring him into the White House, and John Podesta has called for the release of all UFO files several times, and he was aware of the ET issue. What, what I have learned in my time, and, and my, uh, Senator Gravel certainly understands this, believe me, there are plenty of people on the Hill that know that ETs are real. There are plenty of people, in, uh, there are people within the White House that know that <laughs> ETs are real. But they're not being briefed. They've been cut out of the loop by the military intelligence complex, possibly because the military intelligence people are pretty serious dudes, uh, mostly dudes, some women, obviously, and, and they're very upset about politics. They're looking, up, they're, they're looking up from their underground facilities and their secret world, and they're seeing a Congress that's turned into a, a circus, a joke. They're seeing extremely weak presidents that, that really can't get anything done. And I think that they, they may be concerned. They're like, gee, we don't want them... Uh, to really have much access or any access to this extraordinary development that we have been dealing with for 50, 60 years. I can sort of relate. I mean, I can get the point. But unfortunately, that can't go on because uh, what we need to do is not to continue down that path, but we need to solve some of the dysfunctions that are within our poli poli body politic right now that have, have corrupted a representative democracy and the concepts that we, that we had laid down years ago and it's, it's essentially creating enormous amounts of problem. We need reform, in other words. Now, how, when, when reform will come, I don't know. But disclosure of the ET presence could come at any time. And it's my view that this paradigm change, this extraordinary event, may open the door for us to really take a hard look at what's gone on the last 60 years and reform the institutions uh, to the extent needed so that the American people can once again have um, much more influence on governance that the Congress will have oversight 
over the programs that should definitely have oversight. So, so same for the president, and also have a president that is that is a, a, a much stronger and less shackled by some of these dysfunctional issues. A big order. Disclosure itself of ET presidents is a very simple thing, I can assure you. Reforming and restructuring the institutions that have been corrupted over the last 60 years because of the various historical processes underway is going to be much more difficult in a way. Yet, I'm, I know that uh, Senator Gravel is more than happy to participate in that, as are many others. And so, But first, we need to get this truth out, this fundamental incredible truth out to the world. We do have a question, actually, from a listener that I received here is from Steve from Ohio. Uh, this is, okay, Eisenhower, during his closing statement, he gave a warning, beware of military-industrial complex. He was, cut, was he cut out of the loop after his ET meeting at Edwards Air Force Base in 1954 and then cut out of the loop in 61, I presume, when he was out? Uh, well, I'm sure he was cut out when he was out, but <clears throat> but you got to keep in mind that uh, Eisenhower was able to define the problem very accurately because he was part of the problem when he was president. In other words, we built up our whole nuclear capability under his presidency because it was a cheap way to have defense, and but it was a horrible policy decision, and of course. He uh, and his Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, you know, invaded a number of countries uh, at their own initiative uh, to try and and bring about regime change where we thought it was necessary to do. So Eisenhower uh, comes off good because of his statement, but he doesn't come off very well because of his conduct of his presidential office. But here again, we have to acknowledge that no president since Eisenhower has even acknowledged the problem. And so you can't solve the problem if you don't even know it exists. And that's the, that's the status of where we're, what we're involved with right now. Senator uh, Gravel, let me ask you this. Uh, basically all presidential elections rigged and uh, the final, the outcome is already known before the vote. No question about it. It's, it's rigged in this way, is that no, no person could get elected president if he did not adhere to the capitalist concepts that are, that are promulgated by Wall Street. And when I say Wall Street, I mean the, the global capitalist community, the, the, the global marketplace. If you don't buy into that, you're never going to be president. And keep in mind, it takes money to become president. Just look at Obama. When, when he raised almost a billion dollars uh, to become president, well, you have to ask, well, why would people spend that kind of money investing in, in Obama if they thought that he might be at variance from the political beliefs that they held? He was not at variance. He was their puppet from the get-go, and his presidency has proven that. When you went for president, did you, were you under the impression that you didn't have a chance, or did you think you might be able to change the establishment? No, I, I, I knew I didn't have a chance. Uh, but what I felt was that if I could raise the issue of direct democracy, where people could participate in government as lawmakers, not just as aficionados uh, and transferring their power to elected officials, that they could participate. But unfortunately, that, that's not what happened. The media folk did not focus on what I was trying to say, but they focused on the issues, and I got trapped into speaking to those issues and pointing out that there's going to be no change with Obama, there was no change with the last presidential group, and there's not going to be in the future. And until we find a way, and of course, people can find that on my website, uh, ncid.us, you'll find that the people can do it directly themselves and not rely upon representative government, where I think nothing will change. You know, I know, I know you're running out of time. I just wanted to get this last one in. Basically, if you had a second chance with what you know now, what would you have said uh, during those debates with that prime time uh, opportunity? 
I would repeat it over and over again that the power is with the people. There's only two venues for change. The government, wherein lies the problem, and the people. But the people don't have the tools to bring about change. That tool is lawmaking. And we have it in some states at the state level, but we need to have it nationally for all the people to participate in power, as was so articulated by Marcus Cicero 2,000 years ago. Senator, Mr. Bassett, I have a, one more message caller for you. It's actually a voice message caller that just came in. I'm going to play it for you right now. I'm talking tonight on the radio with a address to the issue of if a duck cage like myself have had exposure to ETs, are we enemies of the state? And do we risk being thrown into military prisons for our exposure to the extraterrestrials? Thank you. Uh, the answer uh, to that is no. Uh, you won't be drawn into that. Uh, what would happen is uh, th this is where knowledge does bring about a fundamental paradigm change. And so if people were to stand up and press hard on the elected officials to release information about the extraterrestrial issues facing the globe, uh, that would be beneficial. I don't think it, at this point it would trigger uh, an onslaught of uh, of what would be possible uh, of what the government did with the uh, the Wall Street uh, movement, as you know, it was crushed like grapes uh, when they decided to do it. Uh, and so, no, I don't think pushing for it, the extraterrestrial knowledge is going to jeopardize anybody in that regard. But I'll leave it at that. And uh, and Steve Bassett, who's the one who brought my attention to all of this. Uh, can ably respond to your questions, and I have to apologize for uh, for leaving the program. But at uh, going on 84, uh, I need to find out what's going on with an MRI. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely, Senator. We are very grateful, and we would love to get updates for you down this year. Uh, and God bless you, and good luck on your MRI. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be well, Senator. I'll be I'll be in touch soon. Third, base of the moon.